In my ongoing quest to perfect my Brave King Boucheron build, I found some new potential tech thanks to the current wave of DLC that delivered Emblem Crom into our grasps. Will this be the best possible pick for an emblem for the Brave King build? We're going to find out. Let's talk about it. Hello everyone, my name is Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman, and yes, once again today, we are talking about my personal pet project, Maddening Brave King Boucheron. For those of you who don't know, I've done a couple videos talking about this, you can see them here and here, you can find them on the channel if you're curious to learn more about what my plan is here. But right now, I want to talk about Emblem Crom. I recently got access to him after finishing his DLC map for the first time, and upon seeing what it is that he has to offer, I feel like this may be the pick over Marth if you have the DLC and or you are using the DLC. Now, if you haven't seen my other videos, the idea here is that Boucheron may actually make a great wielder of brave weapons and overall have really good damage output with them, even in maddening mode. And I've had a lot of people give me some pushback against that, whatever, but we're going to see how it all plays out. But the idea being that with Brave Weapons, you can make the most use of Boucheron's Moved to Tears skill that's giving plus two damage per attack when you're being backed up, when you are leading a chain attack, if you will. And with a Brave Weapon, I mean, that's a free eight damage on top of your normal attacks and everything else that you have going on. So I feel like there's definitely some potential synergy there that has been thus far working out quite well. And I was originally using Marth with Boucheron in order to get extra attacks in that move to tears will also affect through things like Divine Speed and Break Defenses. Now, I'm far enough into my Maddening run where I have temporarily lost access to a bunch of my emblems, so I had to find a replacement to, that would really make Boucheron hum while I was going through up to the point where you get your emblems back. And that's where I found Crumb. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with Boucheron. I was thinking maybe, I was thinking maybe Lin originally, because Lin's clones that she can make would give extra backup for Boucheron, and that does work quite well. But if we look at Krom, we can see there are a number of effects here that are going to be really beneficial for Boucheron. Now, of course, if you don't have the DLC or you don't want to use the DLC in a particular run, Marth will definitely still work very well for Boucheron, but Krom might just edge him out. Let's look at what we have going on here. So first of all, stats-wise, Boucheron is getting strength, dex, and speed from being paired with Krom. And for this build, those are the three most important things. Yeah, you know, it's been said to me a lot that enemies in Maddening get very fast, they get very tanky, they can be quite dodgy because of their speed. So having strength to punch through their defenses, dex to get past their avoid, and then speed of our own to at the very least avoid being doubled, and hopefully be able to quad them are all very important things. So right off the bat, the stats that we're getting with Krom are very, very nice. Next thing that we get is the Leaven Sword, and that's at baseline. That's before we wind up getting Thoron from Robin and the Falchion then from Krom. But even just having the Leaven Sword is nice because it gives Boucheron a built-in ranged option for when I eventually class change it. He's not going to be staying in Berserker much longer. He's going to be going over to Hero so that we can get the Brave Assist skill as a class skill. And that's when we'll start using swords more. That's why I have Sword Power 3 on him right now. Can't use it yet, but he will be able to, and I wanted to get it before we lost access to Roy. So the Leaven Sword is nice because it's giving us that ranged option with a sword that'll benefit from Sword Power 3. And when we're engaged to actually be able to use it, that's where the other half magic bonus is going to come in. We'll get to that in a second. So the Leaven Sword is going to be very nice for this build, allowing us to hit armored units and things like that for decent damage, all that type of good stuff. One of the things that's the most exciting to me, though, is Surprise Attack. If unit initiates combat from terrain that provides an avoid bonus, any terrain, foe cannot counterattack. And you got to remember, this is a glass cannon build. Boucheron does not have good defenses. He's I th internal level like 12 at base class, plus the 10 from Berserker. And the only thing he's got going for him defensively is HP. He doesn't have great defense, doesn't have great res, doesn't have great luck. So we want to be able to avoid whatever damage we can when we're going for our big brave attacks. Surprise attack allows us to do that. We're already in cover, presumably because we want to be able to avoid attacks on the enemy phase. 
and it allows us to open up on an enemy and hopefully hit them up to four times without proccing any sort of counterattack. It's it's excellent. It's awesome. Like I, there's no getting around how great that is. Rally Spectrum as a nice little bit of a support option is nice. You know, sometimes you don't want your glass cannon to be on the front line. With Rally Spectrum, it still has a role to play, even if it's a little too dangerous for him to be up front of a given turn. Giving adjacent allies plus three to all seven basic stats for a turn, then once it gets up to Rally Spectrum uh, plus, it's like all allies within two spaces, I believe, plus three to all seven basic stats for one turn. I mean, <laughs> it's pretty damn good, especially on Maddening where every point of stats matters. So. Having this as a backup option for when you can't be on the front line, excellent. Love it. Brute Force is the only real part of this build that isn't super synergistic. I'm not going for crits with Boucheron. In making our physical attack crit hits deal more damage just randomly, I mean, it's nice. It's a nice bonus. It will happen. You know, I've had Boucheron get plenty of crits just by happenstance before. But it's not what we're building into. Could this be really good on like a specific killer sword, Wo Dao, killer axe build? Sure, absolutely. Not going to dispute that, and it might be a backup option for Boucheron. I might give him a forged killer axe or a forged killing edge or something like that to make use of this, but it's not the focus of the build. Will it be useful sometimes though? Absolutely. I mean, if you're getting two, four attacks from Brave, you're more likely to proc crits, so this will at least be beneficial in those scenarios. Now here's the big one. Other half. Other half is nuts with Boucheron. It's because of that move to tears skill. So what does it do? When unit initiates combat, Robin Chain attacks. Grants magic plus 10 while engaged. And because Boucheron is in a backup class, and will continue to be in a backup class even when we change the hero, it is a guaranteed hit with the chain attack. Why is this so good? Well, if you haven't already figured it out, that means when we are engaged with Krom, we will have up to four turns once we've maxed out their synergy to guarantee that Boucheron is triggering move to tears on every single attack that he initiates. Remember, this is a player phase build, so that's what we're focused on here. This means for four turns, you can essentially just add plus four to plus eight to every single attack action that he makes for free. That's before we factor in things like Alier's bonus to damage, who we're always going to have near Boucheron, ideally, or anything from our weapons, or our stats, or anything else. It's pretty solid. And when enemies are as tanky as they are on Maddening, again, you want every bit of damage that you can get. So, this is going to be so nice. How does it stack up to things like Divine Speed, Break Defenses? I'm not 100% sure yet. I haven't had the opportunity to experiment with Krom and Marth, both kind of side by side as emblems for Boucheron, especially, you know, I don't have the build even done yet. But by the time we get Marth back, the build should be pretty much completely online, and then I'll be able to compare more in my final updated Brave King Boucheron version 2.0 video that I'm planning on doing. But I do think as far as your general gameplay goes, especially because it might be hard to always break enemies, might be hard to always get the full benefits of divine speed because of doubling. This is just going to be a guaranteed damage boost. And that's nice. I can't really argue with that. Finally, of course, we get Gig 11 Sword, just a pretty solid finisher, using to attack with a magic sword, magic attack that uses physical attack power, swords only. Boucheron's going to have pretty good physical attack power, especially seeing as how we've been building him through Berserker to buff his strength as much as possible. Being able to take that damage and turning into magic damage, which enemies are generally speaking going to have less defense against. Very, very nice. Going to be good damage. Pretty solid finisher overall. Is this going to be better than Lodestar Rush with like a big nasty silver blade or something like that? I'm going to say probably not. But as far as finishing moves go, it's not bad. And I don't think Lodestar Rush probably being better than this for Boucheron outweighs the benefits of the neutral game that we're getting with Move to Tears, Surprise Attack, Rally Spectrum, Brute Force, all that type of good stuff. Other half, like, come on. So I think that this is going to be the way to go. Then, of course, as we go, we will get access to Thoron, which, with the plus 10 magic from other half, Boucheron will actually be able to deal some decent damage with if I need to. And then the Falchion, which is just a good sword overall, it'll give us built-in dragon effectiveness, will be more useful as we get later into the game. It's just all really beneficial. So I think that 
this is going to be the emblem to use with Boucheron if you're doing the Brave King Boucheron build and have access to the DLC. Again, I want to do some more testing, but I mean, I really can't argue with it. It gives us our swords that we want to have with this build since we're playing into Sword Power 3. I may wind up, specifically for the Chrom version of this build, may not get Dual Assist, which was the other skill that I was initially thinking of putting into the Brave King build. I might go for something like Speed Taker, people have been recommending a lot, would probably be a very solid option for any sort of Brave build, or maybe just some sort of plus speed type of thing going on. And something to consider with Chrom as well, we can actually check this out here, is that you do get access to speed and dexterity by leveling with Chrom. Where is yeah, Boucheron here? So you can get speed and dexterity as one of your other skill options, and that's not a bad option. You know, it's going to be quite expensive by the time you get to the max levels of it, but even just getting flat bonuses to your speed and dex to guarantee that you're going at least to match the enemy speed, if not exceed it, and be able to hit pretty damn good. That's going to be important for a brave build. So you even just get some passive benefits in that regard. Now, as far as Krom's other skills to inherit go, I'm not super interested in anything here. Something like Charm, maybe, where your chain attacks will be increased to 90% accuracy could be good. But only having a 10% boost to the accuracy of your backup attacks is not that great. It's a cheap skill to have. Could be like maybe a stopgap option, but eh, not super sold on it. Sword Guard would definitely be more useful if we were doing a tankier build with this. We're not. And then things like Rally Spectrum plus Brute Force Surprise Attack we're going to have by having Krom equipped. Now, if we decide to go back to Marth, maybe inheriting something like Surprise Attack wouldn't be a bad idea to still have access to while using Marth. Get it all of your break defenses and your divine speeds and all that type of stuff to stack up and just get a bunch of free hits in, that could be good. But I'm not super sold on anything else that's here, but that's fine. That's fine, you know? Makes it easy. If you don't even have to inherit any skills and the equipped kit is just that good, sounds good to me. So that's kind of where I'm at with this evolution of the Brave King Boucheron build. If you're trying my build and you have the DLC, consider Chrome. Let me know how it goes for you. Uh, we're going to be hitting what people have been telling me is the big difficulty spike on Maddening here pretty soon. So I'm excited to see how my team performs when stacked up against that. Because right now we've been cruising. And I've been pretty happy with how everything's been performing. So I'm excited to see how it all shakes out. Changes will come if needed as necessary. But yeah. If you have any other suggestions, do feel free to let me know. I always read all the comments. And I've been taking people's considerations to heart. Again, Speed Taker was a big suggestion by many people. And maybe there's some other stuff that I'm missing. Until then, thank you all so much for watching. My name has been Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman. I hope you all have a good night. Stay safe and healthy out there. And remember, be good to each other. Bye now.